as you've been talking about your own journey going back to school and finishing up your degree and everything, I've been thinking about doing the same thing. I've been thinking about applying to some master's programs, and this is something that I've been struggling with for a few years now is like, what sort of program do I want to enter into? What do I ultimately want to do with that program? And I think the process of choosing and kind of taking that step forward is one where I have to like heal from a lot of things that I went through in the past and a lot of like what my beliefs were in the past. And one of the biggest things hindering me is that I have this tendency to rebel against conventions and rebel against institutions. And it comes from my thinking that like, if I just do things my own way, I can prove my own merits and I don't need those conventions to approve of me. And my work is what is going to prove my individuality and not what is going to prove my understanding of what the conventions have taught me. So I wonder if that's relatable to you at all. Oh, absolutely. And if you yeah. went through anything similar, having left school for a while and gone back, and did you have any uh, similar process kind of holding you back? Yeah, that was kind of why I left to begin with. I didn't like that I was being told to do this and that this was how I was supposed to judge my value and how I was supposed to honestly judge whether or not I was intelligent or interesting or interested, like all of that stuff, you know, I like to read on my own. I like to write on my own, like all of the things that I was interested in that I would potentially want to get a degree in. I felt like I didn't need anybody's validation. I just needed to go out and live that life for a while and learn the way all my idols did and anything that I could see getting a degree in, I didn't really care about. So that definitely was a driving force of me leaving. Coming back, it was like, it's definitely been a recurring thought, but it didn't hold me back as much as I thought it would once I got going because it just felt so different. I felt so different as a person, but it definitely, it comes to mind every so often. Like, um, there's certain, you know, just certain markers. Like if I'm talking to my advisor or something like that, there's certain little like triggers like that where I'll kind of be like, Oh, this feels like it did when I was 18, but I just think about it for a couple hours and think about why it might feel that way. And maybe think about the last time I had that conversation and it's been a lot easier than I thought it would be once it got rolling. But initially, yeah, for sure, it was it was on my mind. I was weighing it heavily for a few weeks before I applied. Yeah. And one of my biggest things, we talked about this last year on an episode of Friday Night Folk. I had like realized that I had this great fear of community. And it stems from growing up in a religious community. And it stems from like feeling some form of betrayal in that community. And there are some specific examples that I won't get into. But a few occasions when I felt like my individuality was being challenged and even negated. And for some reason, this has carried over into academia so I don't want to say that I'm stuck in this place, but it's at least been a few days now that I've been in this low energy, not knowing where my thoughts are supposed to go with this information, kind of thinking, yes, I should start a therapeutic process of some sort before I made this decision so that I know what needs to be healed and what needs to be fulfilled. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a very... A valid way to go into it though because it is the way that they present a lot of college programs they sort of sell it on the idea that you can get an identity through that or you can like you know today's the first day of the rest of your life kind of stuff and one thing that helped me really reason with it ultimately was just honestly leveraging it against the quarantine that was I think the only reason why I actually bit the bullet because I was able to look at it not as my identity, but just as kind of a challenge and frame it that way. Frame it as like, this is just going to be the next few months of my life. It doesn't have to be who I am. It doesn't even have to be something I use. I just am going to go and I'm going to finish what I started as fast as I possibly can, as well as I possibly can. And that's going to be it. And uh, that really helped me. That that took it out of that context of like, well, this is who I am now. And I got to cut my hair and I got to turn stuff in on time and you know, be a good little student. I just, I couldn't think like that. It screwed with me. So I just found looking at it in more of a, it's a thing to do. It's not a thing I am. 
way. That, that really helped. But that, again, that was the length of time, too, that was helpful. I only had to commit to an associate's at first. So it was like for the next six months, if I bust my ass, this will be what it is, and then it'll be done. So that helped me. That was kind of what inspired me to start thinking about this more seriously, is if I can begin this process during a time when I'm not facing the social ramifications of it, yeah, then it's going to be a lot easier for me, ultimately. And so, you know, I don't know if I decide to do this when I'm going to start doing it, but there is this nagging part of me that keeps saying, you know, if you do this, it's a big commitment. Okay, why am I afraid of the commitment? If you do this, it is a life that entails joining in with a community that might betray you. You know, a lot of trauma for me has come from academia. So there's this nagging part of me still that is saying, if you choose a life where academia is your forever home, then you're opening up the opportunity to be betrayed over and over again. Even though some of my fondest moments from my from my life are in academia, and even though I know that that setting is one of the only settings where I, as a person, make sense. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I was I was wondering, like, because I felt like you, you did have a similar experience. Oh, uh, definitely. If that was something for you to overcome, and whether there was any sort of trauma for, for you associated with, with that. And even if it's something just as small as, at one point, you identified as a dropout. Oh, for sure. And yeah. it affected your self image, you know? Yeah. It honestly, there have been a few times where I've realized how strongly I identified with that role. It was mostly early on, I would say like maybe June ish. I started everything in probably April, May and started really formally, like towards the end of May, early June. And right around then was when I had some definite existential crises and I resorted ultimately to like when I would get that way and I would start freaking out about like, oh my God, I'm like rushing home to do homework. What's wrong with me? Like I derailed my entire life to never have to do this again, to never have to feel this way again. And it honestly felt good in the moment. It was something to focus on. It was a reason to care what day of the week it was. And that freaked me out more than anything. So those days I would just get in my car and, and just drive like excessively fast and blast um, anthems and just chain smoke until I felt like me again, <laughs> like until I just started coughing and then I would come back and it, for some reason, I mean, I don't know if I would advocate that specific approach, but it, it helped it, like it helped to kind of whip me back to center and then ultimately see kind of the ridiculousness of it. And I sort of slowly started to walk away from pinning my identity on that and realizing like, I can just do this for the next few months or the next couple of years or however long this thing lasts. And as long as it's fun, I can do it. And if it's not, I can pause it. And that was, when I realized the strength in dropping out versus having that be my identity, it was just, it taught me how to not be afraid to walk away. And that's different compared to when I went for the first time. And I didn't catch that going in, but now it's this kind of ace in the hole that I feel like I have where if this starts to become crushing and unpleasant again, I'll just walk, you know, I've done it before under way worse circumstances. And that helped a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm remembering a time when, I was very close to finishing my degree. I was in my early 20s and there was this feeling that, okay, this is the gateway, right? I, I have to do this and then I'll be employable as a writer and I'm always going to be writing my own stuff anyway. I'm always going to be a creative anyway, but this is the way that I can start making money at that. And one specific thing happened in a class that really made me feel robbed of my own individual thought. And as a student who, who writes about literature, you want to be able to employ original thought and you want your original thought to not necessarily have a reliant basis in what has already been done or what the conventional norms are or what the academic norms are. And I think a lot of creative people probably struggle with this. So without getting into the specific details of my own experience, it led to a lot of second thoughts about, can I even function as an academic knowing that it's not my individuality that's going to be recognized, it's my adherence to the academic norms. And so that has always been kind of a hindrance to me and a, a bigger one than I've ever really realized until the past few days. Because as I'm thinking 
do I want to commit to this as a career? Do I want to commit to another at least three years of this if I go into a master's program? Then am I going to be subjecting myself to those fears again? Am I going to be putting myself in a position where I can't trust the community around me to not betray my ideals? I realize that I'm speaking very, very vaguely about this. No, I know what you mean, though. Yeah. It's because I just spent a long time like <laughs> watching Goodwill Hunting and <laughs> realizing <laughs> how how many trust barriers I have formed over this stuff, and just like weeping heavily for a while. And um, I don't know. It's been a weird night for me, but yeah. Well, did you? You said you went in your early twenties. Like, did you go like right out of high school? into that pipeline? I took a year off after high school and then I was off and on for a while. I would, I would go part-time or, or full-time. I would take a year off here and there, a semester off here and there. So I think ultimately that was a good thing for me because it allowed me to explore a lot of other avenues. Definitely. I mean that, I wouldn't honestly discount that either. Cause that's, I think it's kind of twofold. It's, it's impossible to recognize how strong that system is around you when you're that age or just that age range, you know, from sort of mid high school when you're sort of like being told to plan for this, or if you're not planning for it, then you're fucking up or whatever they tell you to maybe like 24, 25 ish, somewhere like a few years ago for me, you know, where you're sort of at the end, like that window is closing as far as society is concerned. And you're either screwing up and committing yourself to this life or you're going to get back on track. I think that is so oppressive and it's so hard to see it when you're there. For some people that is all well and good and it works, but for some people it's it's an unfair burden. And I was shocked by how much that actually factored into that decision, like how much I thought it was school that was crushing me. And in reality, it was just that I needed to go out and live and everybody was telling me I couldn't. So now going back, it's been liberating each time I finish a class or each time I finish an assignment or something, or just every time I'm in it, to just realize that like I can enjoy this for the subject matter, I can enjoy the challenge of it, whatever, but it's not that same feeling. Even the most hellish week, I just, I had no idea how much that expectation was messing with my head. And I completely thought it was the same thing that you're describing. Like I always thought it was an issue with community, it was an issue with identity, an issue with school itself. And for sure there has been some of that, but it was much easier to work through because it wasn't the full picture. But I don't know if I would have realized that from afar, you know, like, I don't know if I would have realized that prior to actually starting it. Cause I was thinking about this before the quarantine. I just, I was getting cold feet every time a semester start rolled around, I would figure out a reason to not call whoever I had to call. So this was literally the only reason I did it was just, I have nothing else to do. And it forced me to learn these lessons, but I don't regret doing it personally. And I, I completely came from the same place, honestly, from what you're describing maybe different sources of the traumas, but I, I absolutely had some of those with institutional environments. We've come across this word a lot of times in, in the few episodes that we've done so far, but it's just realizing that you have agency. It's just realizing that the classroom or the realm of academia doesn't have to be exclusively what other people make it or what the conventions make it. And the conclusion that I came to was basically... You know, I have my own values, I have my own beliefs, and I'm going to bring those with me everywhere I go. And by virtue of my being enrolled in this class, my beliefs are inherently a part of this class. And that was something that helped me a lot when I was kind of going back and deciding that I could be my own person within that realm. Yeah, I think whatever aspects of it feel comfortable, at least in my experience so far, whatever aspects of it feel comfortable or feel interesting just go towards those and whatever ones feel kind of uh, treacherous or make you nervous, just don't even sweat them. There's always a way to kind of dodge them at least temporarily. And, you know, just don't put that pressure on yourself to, to join a new community or be a part of this new culture all of a sudden, like whatever, you know, just go in selfishly, basically, like just like rob it blind, you know, go in there and get whatever opportunities, whatever connections you want, whatever you need and see what's left, you know? And might be pleasantly surprised with it. You might end up back in a place where like, yeah, I just don't need this structure. And then at least you'll know. Yeah. And I think that's something that was holding me back a lot. There's a combination of insecurity. I don't have agency. I cannot act on my own behalf. 
and then a fear of community that was instilled in me, you know, 10 or 15 years prior to that, that kind of led me to believe that if I did uh, enact my own ideals, and this is part of being an artist and part of being an academic, I think, is being idealistic about what you think the work should be, what you think the research should entail. I reconciled that way, way later. But at the time, you know, at the age of 24, 25, just couldn't see how challenging the existing ideals could in any way be accepted as as my participation in the ideals. And I thought it would just be like, this is me as an individual, and therefore it is a rebellion and and not participation. And maybe I wanted it to be seen that way. I don't know. But as any person in their mid-20s that is kind of non-actualized at that point. It's it's hard to know sometimes if your participation in something is for the good of it or for the good of you, and which of those will be seen as truth within that context. Yeah. And that anger and that, that sadness and that, that fear and confusion, I think that's really necessary for people who feel it. You know, like it's just... It's never a clean break, but, uh, you know, it's, I think it's really good to follow that stuff because it does give you strength later on and give you perspective later on that you benefit from immensely whatever circumstances you're in. So yeah, I wouldn't downplay that either. Like I mean, the amount of living you've done since you last were in that environment in any capacity probably doesn't feel like anything day to day because you've been living it, but you might come in with a different swagger or a different mentality than you had before. And you never know where that can lead. Thank you.